Coming up, how to make snow disappear before your eyes. Finding earwax inside your friend's ears. How to blow a coin into a cup. And a jet boat that'll blow you out of the water. Can't wait to see how those cute little boats are going to turn into jet-powered races. <laughs> Me either. But first, poor old Patrick's been sent to his room and he's not a happy chappy. I can't believe it. I've been grounded. But Tammy's outside and wants to tell me something. Something top secret. I can't shout or Mum will hear me. Tammy, can you hear me? What's the secret? It's no good. He can't hear me. How can I get his secret message without anybody else hearing? I know. I'll get Tammy to write it down and throw the paper up to me. That's it. Now send it up. Oh no, it's not heavy enough. He'll never get that piece of paper up here. What we need is some kind of secret spy telephone. There's bound to be something in my trusty junk box. Hmm, I think I've got an idea. After an exhausting game of football, Larissa and I deserve a nice cold drink. Oh no! There's only one can left. I suppose we could share it. But I think it would be more fun if we played for it. You up for it, Larissa? Okay. My house, my rules. Your challenge, if you choose to accept it, is to get this coin into the glass without touching it. Think you can do it? She's never gonna blow it into the cup like that. <laughs> she has no idea how to do it. That delicious can of drink is as good as mine. You give up? Okay, let the king of the coin trick show you how it's done. It's easy when you know how. Time for me to enjoy a nice cold drink. Larissa would never have been able to blow the coin through such a small gap. The secret is to blow quickly through the gap into the glass. The trapped air inside increases the air pressure and lifts the card. That tips the coin into the glass. OK, I got the coin in the cup without touching it, but I'll give Larissa a second chance. If she can get the drink from this can into that glass without touching the drink, we'll share it. Oh, so obvious. Cheers. Great thinking, guys. I reckon those two are just as clever as each other. <laughs> yep. And I think Patrick is about to get up to something pretty clever too. I think everything I need to make spy telephone is right here in my trusty junk box. Let's see. Little lamb? No. Two plastic cups? Yes. Crazy hippo? Not this time crazy. A chainsaw? I don't think so. A long piece of string? Perfect. And the last thing I need is a couple of paper clips. Gotcha. First, I put a small hole in the bottom of each cup. Then I thread each end of the string through a hole and tie it to a paper clip. Now I give it a pull, and the paper clips are flat to the bottom of each cup. That should do it. I may be grounded, but Mum can't stop me talking to Tammy now. If he takes that end and puts it to his ear, he should be able to hear me. Patrick to Tammy. Can you hear me? I wonder why it isn't working. I've just got to figure this out. <laughs> it's supposed to be the day of our big sailing boat race across the pool. There's just one problem. No wind, not even a breath. This is not a good day for sailing. What we need is some boats that are powered by something other than wind. I've got it. Come on, Captain Billy. I know how to make a jet boat. We'll each need a baking dish, some vinegar, bicarbonate of soda, a straw, a funnel and a small drink bottle. First, we make the baking dish into a speedy racing boat shape. Now for the engine. 
We need two holes in each bottle. Thanks, Mum. One on top for the funnel and one on the side for the straw. OK, Billy. Put the straw through the hole in the side of your bottle and leave a long section hanging out. Now glue it in place. Then stick the funnel into the hole on the other side of the bottle. Next, make a hole in the back of the tin foil tray. Sit the bottle in the tray with the straw poking out through the hole in the back. Now make the hole watertight with glue. Pour one tablespoon of bicarbonate of soda into the bottle. And the jet boats are fueled up and ready to race. Bring the vinegar billy and let's go racing. I can't wait to hear those jet boats rev up. Don't forget, they're powered by kitchen chemicals. You might hear a thing. Come to think of it, that's exactly what Daniel's hearing. Nothing. This is Daniel. Look at him. He's in a world of his own. His mum says he's got wax in his ears because he never seems to hear when she calls him. Poor Daniel. How does the wax get in there? Maybe he's been putting candles in his ears. No, I don't think he's that silly. Let's have a look in there. Hmm, I can't see a thing. It's too dark. I need some more light. This torch should do it. This won't hurt a bit. I can't shine it down his ear properly. I think we need a more direct source of light, like the doctor uses. I know how to do it. I'll need the torch, scissors, a small plastic bottle, a marker pen, some tape, and Daniel's waxy ear hole. Cut the top third of the bottle off. We need it to fit over the top of the torch. Now we colour the inside of the bottle with the marker pen and tape it to the top of the torch. The black bottle creates a narrower beam of light that will let me see straight down Daniel's ear canal. OK, Daniel, it's time to see if your mum is right about your waxy ears. Yuck! I can see it now. Ah. Haven't you ever cleaned your ears? The outer ear canal has wax-making glands. Earwax traps unwanted dirt from the outside world and prevents it from entering the inner ear and causing infection. If you don't clean your ears properly, the wax can build up over time. Ew, that's disgusting! And I always thought Daniel had nothing between his ears at all. <laughs> Our great sailing race across the pool had to be cancelled. There wasn't any wind. But the race must go on. So Billy and I had built a pair of racing jet boats. There's a tablespoon of bicarbonate of soda on board each boat. We each need a third of a cup of vinegar ready to pour into the funnel. Racers, start your engines. Jet boats, go! Forget about sailing boats. Jet boats are where the action is. Come on! You can do it! Keep moving! Faster! Faster! When baking soda combines with vinegar, it produces carbon dioxide gas. As the pressure of the gas builds up in the bottle, it's forced out through the narrow drinking straw. The carbon dioxide encounters resistance when it meets the water. This creates a force that propels the boat forward through the water. Go, little jet boat, go! Don't let Billy beat us. Billy's boat is taking the lead. Come on, get a move on. Do it for the girls. Come on, come on. Hey, this was my idea. Billy wasn't meant to win. Well done, Billy. A clean sweep to the boys in the jet boat race. <laughs> Speaking of clean sweeps, I believe Herman's about to work out a whole new way of sweeping snow off his back steps. We had another heavy snowfall last night. Dad wants me to clear the snow off the back steps. Then to stop ice from forming and making them slippery, he said to spread the salt all over them. But I don't understand what the salt does. Why does it stop ice from forming? This is just ordinary table salt. I'm going to find out more about salt and ice. I'll just fill these two plastic cups with water. 
I'll add a big scoop of salt to one of them. And stir it in so it dissolves. There. Time for you two cups to spend some time in the freezer. I wonder if I'll see any difference after two hours. Okay, time's up. Out they come. Let's have a look. Uh-huh. The one without salt is already frozen. The one with salt in it is still water. So the salt really does stop water from freezing. When Herman added salt, he introduced dissolved foreign particles. They lower the temperature at which water turns to ice. The greater the amount of salt, the lower the freezing point of the water. So salt really does help prevent ice from forming on Herman's back steps. Hey, I'm going to carry a packet of salt everywhere I go. That way I'll never slip over on the ice. <laughs> he should carry some salt with him too. I'm stuck in my bedroom and I need to talk to Tammy without anyone hearing us. I've made a spy telephone, but it doesn't seem to be working. Maybe it's because the string is so loose. I know. He's got to move back until the string is tight. Can you hear me now? Great. Now about that secret message. Uh-huh. No way. When Tammy talks into the cup, sound waves produced by his voice make the bottom of the cup vibrate. These vibrations then travel along the string to the other cup and make the bottom of the second cup vibrate in the same way. That means Patrick can hear Tammy's voice. The string has to be tied, otherwise the vibrations can't travel from one cup to the other. And it's completely foolproof. Oh well, almost. Oops, that's the end of that conversation, I suspect. And it's the end of ours too, Dana, because we've come to the end of another show. See, See you next time. time.